Hello there, my lovely friends. My name is Betsy, and in today's class, I'm going to be showing you how to create this wonderful little drawing full of lots of organic shapes, just full of life. As you can see, we're mostly going to be using a pen, and there's going to be a little bit of pencil here and there just to create some shadows. So just to get started, here is the paper that we're going to be using. It's just some sketchbook paper. You can use printer paper, that's fine, or whatever you're comfortable with here. So the dimensions of this paper are 7 inches by 5 inches. So some of the other supplies that we're going to be using are just a simple pen. Your favorite will do just fine. We're also going to be using a pencil, and any pencil will work just fine. This is a regular Ticonderoga HB. We will need a blender or blending stump. You could always use tissue if you like. We're going to be using an eraser, of course. And if you like, you can always grab a ruler so that we can work on that frame that we're going to draw in. Something else that you might also want to use is one of these tools here to help you create some circles. A lot of people have these. So this is one of the ones that I have. I also have this little one here. Or if you don't have one of these, you could always just use something that you have lying around that's round, that you can just trace the shape. Or you could always draw your circles freely by hand if you're confident in doing things that way. So to get started here, the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on simply creating a frame. And this is where the ruler is going to come in. Sometimes I do just create my frames freely. I just go by hand and use my pencil to create a frame. But for this one, I'm trying to create a nice clean frame. And also I'm trying to just use this opportunity to just kind of work slowly and meditate and just think about things while I'm just creating these simple lines. And so this is the frame that I'm creating. Usually I create a frame that is about half of an inch to approximately maybe even three eighths of an inch is my preferred size. And so that's what I'm creating here. Feel free to change the, the dimensions of yours and just take your time. The whole purpose of creating art this way is to just take things slowly and create lines. And so this is just the beginning, creating some nice, nice straight lines. And you can see that what I'm doing here is after I created my first frame, I'm actually going to go in and create a second one. This is going to help layer some of the objects. And by allowing some of the elements that we're going to draw today to spill over one of those frames, it's going to make it look that much more dynamic. And of course, when we get there, I will explain that to you as well. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm just going to create the second frame. And you can see that that one is in pencil and that's very important. Today, I will choose to not go outside of the line that I created in ink. But for the second one, it is in pencil and I am going to occasionally allow my elements to exit outside of that line. That's why it's in pencil. So here we're just going to get started with some of our circles. And like I said, you can use any lids or anything that you have lying around for circles. Mine are a bit large. So instead, I'm going to use this little tool that I have. And I did receive this for free from the company recently. And I've just been having a lot of fun playing around with it. And I'm just going to show you what the tools are here. So it comes with this little circle here. And of course, it also came with some instructions. And here is the main tool here. I'm about to bring this out. So there is the bar. And here is the central part. And I'm going to show you right now how I'm going to use it. So again, they sent this to me for free. This is the basic set. And it's just a perfect tool for creating circles, which I'm actually kind of falling in love with right now. It's wonderful. I love the way it spins. It's nice and smooth. And I'm just loving that I don't have to leave that little pin mark in the paper. So I just start by marking off a point where I want to create the circle and then I try to line up my my tool here. I had to lift it up to 
to see how it looks, really only because the camera was in the way. And then I just select a point, place my pencil inside and just do the usual thing where I allow it to travel. And I draw my circle. So there's my first circle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start layering a few more circles. So I'm going to select another position. I usually select a spot on the edge of the initial circle. Like so. And I'm just randomly selecting another size and just creating a partial circle around there. So now these two circles are layered on top of each other. Right now they just look like cookies that are stacked. And then I'm going to try to find another spot that looks okay. So I'm thinking around on this side and I'm going to make a circle that's just slightly smaller. Just going to get that one in there right there. So that's pretty good. And I'm okay with the three circles, but I am going to add a fourth one just to continue that kind of cascading effect. But really quickly, I'm just going to erase some of that pencil there just to help me see how things look. And so down below, that's where I'm going to add another circle. Just gently draw in that pencil line. So that looks pretty good. I could add more if I want to. You're, of course, free to add more if you would like. I'm just going to stick with these four circles. And of course, if you're interested in the tool, I'm going to be linking the information to their website in the description. And at this point, I could use the tool to mark off some lines, but I'd rather show you how I do this by hand. So what I want to do here is I want to create a flower. So I'm just going to create some light separation so that I can draw in those petals. So you can see I did my first line just to cut things in half. And I'm going to do another line to cut that circle into quadrants. And I'm going to continue cutting it this way. So each quadrant is now cut in half so that we now have eighths. So that's one of the lines. Here's the other one. So now there are eight sections, just like a pizza. And now I'm going to cut those in half again so that I have sixteenths. So usually when I want to draw flowers and I want them to be nice and perfectly symmetrical, this is what I do. Rather than use a tool to mark off my lines, I just go in and I cut everything in half and cut it in half again and cut it in half again. And I get sixteenths. If I really wanted to have even more petals, lots of tiny little petals, I could cut these segments in half again, but I think I'm happy with the sixteenths. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to turn this this pizza with his long thin slices, I'm going to turn it into a flower. And I think for this one, I just want to draw a very small circle at the center. I tend to often draw a bigger one, but I think for this one, I'm happy with just a little circle. It's always nice to try drawing your flowers in a different way, just to see how it looks. So there's my initial circle. Looks pretty good. And then I'm going to come in with my pen. I'm going to start adding in those lines. Notice that the top of the petal, I rounded off those little corners. And I'm just going to take my time and come in and add each one of those petals in there. So there we go. We're just going over that line work that we did in pencil, just taking our time. There's no need to rush here. Just enjoy every line, enjoy every moment. And just take your time and go slowly. This is when you want to take this opportunity to practice getting those nice steady lines. You want to practice going slowly, methodically, and really paying attention to how your hand is behaving. Are you experiencing any pain in your hand? Is your hand trembling a little? So in essence, you just want to take a moment to really pay attention to how your body is behaving. So right here, we're just going to finish up these last couple of petals. You'll notice that they are very, very thin towards the center of the flower. And they get nice and wide as they open up. So it's just a very simple flower, very standard. 
but it's going to be just a very nice element to this entire setup here. Nice rounded petals at the top. So there's that last one. So now that we're done doing the primary line work for this, we're going to add some more lines down at the base. You'll notice that I'm just adding two lines at the base of each petal. And what these lines are going to do is they're going to just make it like there is some shading. It's going to look like it's just a little deeper in color there. It's going to help give some dimension to that flower. So just two little lines is all it takes. Or depending on the kind of pen that you have, just one line might do as well, or maybe three. You can change it up depending on how your pen is behaving here. Also notice that when I create these lines, I'm letting them taper off. This is going to give those lines much more character. So when you start the line, allow more ink to come out so that it's thicker. And as you pull the pen away, just move that stroke so that you're pulling the pen away really fast. And that helps taper off that line. So here's that last one. And now that we're done with the flower, we can start thinking about some of the next elements that are going to go in the other circles. But of course, as usual, we're going to add in a line around those petals, just a little thicker, just to help frame that in. So you can see here, I'm just using the same pen. If you have a different pen that's thicker, like let's say you're using Microns right now, this is a great opportunity to switch over to one of those bigger pens if you're using a small one. Switch over to a bigger one right now. This might help you out. Or you might have a marker. Anything like that will do just fine. So here I'm just working my way around. Nice and slow. Just getting that line around those petals. So I know that personally right now, this is just a good time there where I, I just meditate on how grateful I am. Just so grateful that my hands are here, that they are working just fine. I'm not in pain. I'm able to draw, I'm able to write. I'm able to do such simple things as just clean up the kitchen and play with my cats. Simple things like that, that just make every day that much better. So I'm just really grateful for all of that. So now I'm thinking about what I want to do in this next circle. And because I'm not entirely sure yet, I'm just going to trace that outer line. So again, this just gives us a chance to really think about what we want to do next, what kind of patterns, just doing something easy as tracing a line. So there's the line. And how about we just come right in and let's just create another line inside of the first circle. So we're basically making it another concentric arch here, an arc. That's what they're called in mathematics. When you have an incomplete circle, these are called arcs. This is a pretty big one. We're just going to go around and add that in. I could have used my circle tool to make this at the beginning, but I didn't know yet that I wanted it. So I'm just going to go around right here. So now I have two of them and this kind of na really nicely frames in the space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an interesting little pattern inside of here. Let's see what we do here. Let's make these lines. So for me, all these lines are heading downward in one direction. Now I'm going to create another set of lines that goes in the other direction. So these are going to cross. It's going to create this. It's going to look almost like a chain link fence, like a mesh, like a woven pattern. So that's just the framework. And what I want to do is I'm going to come in with the pen and I'm going to create little blocks inside. And these blocks are not going to touch. Notice that I just created a square, filled it in. 
So there are all these little squares. And they are not touching. So this is going to allow that little woven pattern to come up in between them. So I'm just going to go through real slowly and take my time and draw in each one of these little squares. And this part really is just so relaxing. It's just a simple little shape and we're just repeating it over and over and over. Square by square, you're gonna watch this come to life. And so try to pay attention to all those tiny little spaces that get created around the edges, almost these little triangles, and make sure that you go in there and fill those in as well. Of course, it isn't necessary, but it's just a nice thing to go in and just add that extra little detail. Just make it all look that much more complete. And besides, that's the whole point of what we're doing. We're here to draw, we're here to do a nice tedious task to keep our mind busy, to keep our hands busy. So there you see, just creating more little squares and rectangles, such simple shapes. And yet when they all come together, they create something so interesting. So as you can see, it's already starting to look more like like a mesh fabric that's just really thin. So the strings are really far apart and you can see right through to the other side. Here we have a little triangle on the edge. Nice big rectangle. It's also so much fun seeing the way all these little rectangles are just slightly different We've got all these bigger ones right here. And it's nice to see the kind of effect that is created as these shapes change. So you'll notice on the side where the shapes are even smaller, it almost looks like it's darker there. Or maybe like it's bending or curling in some way. So try to pay attention to those kinds of things when you're creating your own patterns, when you're creating your own designs. There are little details that you create here and there, little signature moves of yours that will help create different effects and uh, try to learn from them. Try to learn from the things that you are creating, from the things that are just happening. So they may be little accidents, but they're always worth learning from. And in truth, it doesn't matter how long you've been drawing. You could be doing this for your whole life I know I certainly have. Or you could be very new to this and there's always something to be learned. Some tiny little lesson, some tiny thing to pay attention to that we could always gain some insight from. So for me, I'm really just paying attention to how all these little squares interact. And honestly, I'm just so impressed at how each individual little square doesn't really do much on its own. And yet, together with all its little friends, it just creates such a marvelous design. It's almost like the strength of them put together creates something so much better. So right here, I am getting to the end and I'm creating that last little shape. So that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. So now what I'm going to add in is just a few dots along that border that I had created. I'm just going to keep it simple. But I do want you to notice that as those dots get closer to that edge there, they're going to get closer and closer and closer. So that's just a tiny detail that overall is going to help give this some dimension. And it's going to make it look like it's falling away in that area where the, do the uh, dots are coming closer together. So just like that. If I had drawn all the dots uh, separated equally, this effect wouldn't have been so, so clear. So I'm just coming in and erasing some of those pencil lines. I don't need them anymore. And there they go. So now I'm just going to start thinking about how I'm going to fill in that next circle. 
since I already have this sort of botanical floral design, I think when I come into this circle here that's on the left, I'm going to start adding some elements that look like vines. So I'm thinking of adding one right here. I'm just going to let it grow out here. So you'll notice that I did allow the design to go past that inner frame and I'm going to add another one here. And I think I'm pretty happy with those. So I'm just going to use that line to guide how I draw in the line. So I'm just going to follow that curve. Create that nice swirl. It's almost like a swirling vine. Nice long vine heading out. And I'm just going to draw another line along the inside. So it's pretty thin. Got just a little thicker and then it got thin again right here. So whenever I create these, I try to vary the size of them. So right here, I'm just going to take a moment to think about what I want to do next. And I do believe that I'm just going to go into that next partial circle that I've got there. And because I already have some floral and botanical elements here, I think I'm just going to continue that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw these little leaves. You'll notice they're just teardrop shaped with a tiny line inside. And I'm just going to start curving them around each other here. They're fairly small. And they are just going to hug each other. And I'm just going to start here on this right hand side. And you'll notice I'm very slowly, very methodically, just adding more in, heading over to the left. And so for this circle here, I'm just going to keep working my way that way. And I'm going to vary the size of some of these. They're going to be longer. Some are going to be shorter. Some, some will be higher up. Some will be lower. If you want to, you can just make all of them the same size. If that's what you're comfortable doing, that's fine. Try to change the design a little bit. You're welcome to add elements here that I have not added. You're welcome to try a different kind of leaf here or a different design. There's no, absolutely no problem with that. This is just what I decided to draw right now and I'm comfortable with that. Adding all these little leaves. So I'm just trying to angle them either to the left or to the right so that they can hug each other really tightly. I just want it to look like they're all growing really close to each other. And there's this nice little nest of leaves very tightly packed in there. So there's another leaf and I'm coming close to where that design is that I drew in there, that vine that's overlapping slightly. So I'm going to do my best to add in a few more leaves around it. But because these elements are overlapping, what I'm going to do is as I get really close to it, I'm not going to bother to try to fit too much in there. I'm just going to fill it in in black. One of the ways to make sure that the elements are easily recognizable from each other is by leaving these dark areas around the outer borders. So this is going to help with that. So there you see, I just filled it in with black. Now I just want to go to the other side of that vine and I'm going to add a few more of those teeny tiny leaves just to kind of complete the look there. So I added a border of black just to separate the elements. And I'm just going to come in and add a few of these little leaves. So that looks pretty good. Seems like I'm only going to need a couple more. So that looks pretty good right here. That just about completes that zone right there. Lots of little leaves clustered together. So I'm just going to come over here to this other vine and I'm going to ink in that line. So there's the first one. I'm going to add the second one. I'm going to try to make it look like the other vine. So there we go. Nice and curved. And I'm just going to take a moment to remove some of that line work that I did in the pencil. Just to get it out of the way. So there we go, there's the rest of it. 
And of course, while I'm erasing, I can just start thinking about what I'm going to do in that last circle. I have many, many options. But what I think I want to do is I just want to keep it fairly simple. And I'm going to draw these tiny little shapes. And the way that I think about them is I think they look like little sesame seeds. Because they are just so very, very tiny. So in order to do that, I do want to set up that thick line so that this area can be separated from those previous elements that we drew in. So that's all I'm doing here. Just adding a nice thick line. And that way those elements can be separated. So just starting right in the center. These are very, very tiny. Tiny little loops. And they just look like little seeds. And of course, if you have a different design that you'd like to put here, go right ahead. This is just the one that I wanted to do this time. It is such a nice, tedious design. So very tiny, but I just love the way that it looks at the end. All these little seeds clustered together. It almost looks like the center of a nice big sunflower where all those seeds are just packed right in there. And so you'll notice that I just started off at a point where I thought it would be the center of the circle and I just, I'm just allowing those little seed patterns to work their way out radially from that point. So you'll notice I'm changing the direction of them so that it looks like it's following the arch of the circle. They're not all just heading forward in a simple direction. And you are welcome to do that. You can let them just kind of head in one direction. What that's going to do is it's going to make your shape look very flat. But with what we're doing here, because we're letting them fan out, it's going to help add to the, the shape of this form. So that instead of it looking entirely flat, now it's going to look like it's a little more dimensional, like it's got some curvature to it got just a little more personality to it. And so here you can see I'm just going to keep working my way around. All these little seeds, these little sesame seeds or sunflower seeds, just lots of little guys packed in there. And again this part is just so satisfying. There's something just incredibly meditative about taking such simple, simple forms and just repeating them. Not just once, not just twice, but dozens of times. And so here that's all I'm doing. I'm just taking that same shape and just slowly, methodically adding it again and again and again. So I'm just thickening that line around the edge, making sure that I have that there. And then just adding some more of those little seeds around the edge. And you'll notice that as I get towards that edge to that line, I just start adding kind of that thick black line since I know I'm going to need it anyway. So I'm just kind of gently scribbling that in along the edge. So, so far, this is looking really good. Just finishing up this last little suction right here along the edge. You'll notice that the shapes along the edge aren't terribly clean. Sometimes they just look like tiny little circles or just little blobs and that's fine. For a lot of shapes, as you get around to the edge, the details don't need to be so crisp or so clean. Because really what you're creating there is an area where the, the shape or the surface of that form starts to fall away. And so if you allow those shapes there to get a little blurry or a little unclear, that's absolutely fine. So you'll notice that I kind of just scribble them in because I don't think they're all that important along those outer edges. So here I'm just over on the other side, just adding some more of those little seeds. Just kind of packing them in to complete the look. So 
So I'm just going to add a few more over here. Just reaching that outer edge and completing that. I'm going to add some long ones there and a couple of tiny dots. And that just about does it there. So I'm going to add that thick line since I know I'm going to need it anyway. So there we go. That finishes that one up. So, so far I'm really enjoying all of these designs. They look great. So you'll notice they're layered on top of each other. They're already looking like they're coming to life. So this looks really good. So now we're going to start thinking about what kind of elements we're going to lay around the outside of this. So of course, I'm just going to take a moment to add some of those thick lines since I know I'm going to need them anyway to separate this from the next elements. It's just a nice moment to start thinking about what's going to come next. So as I'm adding in that line, I'm thinking, do I want to add any kind of petals around the outside? I already know that my major elements are already in the drawing. These kind of circular shapes with a few vines, that was the main, that's the main attraction in a sense. So all I really want to do right now is add other elements that are going to complement that. I don't want to add anything that's too, too crazy or too detailed because that's going to draw away from these central images. So I'm already thinking that when, when I'm done and I have a background left, I'm probably going to fill it in with black to really help these shapes pop. So the very first thing I want to do is I'm going to add in a vine. So here I'm adding in this swirl to the other side. And for me, really, it's just to help balance the composition. I had two vines on the other side and it's almost like it's adding weight over there. So I want to add a couple more vines. So let's say right here, I'm going to add another one just to help balance that. Just give it a little more weight over here on the other side. And I might want to add another vine, but I think I'm okay with just these here. So now instead I'm going to move into this corner and then I'm going to start adding another design. So these are these little petals that have a couple of concentric shapes here. Although I'm not sure concentric is the right word for this. So I like to call these flame petals because they do look like petals to me because the way they're pointed. You'll notice it has three little lines with peaks. And I'm going to let them fan out as well. So they look like petals, but they each individual one also looks like a little like candle flame. And I think that's just such a neat, neat little design. So I'm just going to start slowly just packing them in there as well. And it all starts with this little black teardrop and then I add the petal shape about three times. Sometimes I only add it once or twice. It's going to depend on the space. So if there isn't enough space, I'm happy to just add two, two of these little petal shapes. So there you see, I just added a couple of them. And I'm going to let them fan out kind of from that point where I drew that first petal. All the other petals are trying to grow from that point. So again, I'm trying not to keep these growing in one direction because that's going to make it look more flat. I'm going to let them fan out. So here you see that I'm just adding more, just taking my time. And I'm just thinking right now about whether or not I'm going to allow these to spill over that frame that I did in pencil. And although it might look nice, I think this time I'm going to choose to keep them inside of that frame. So I'm going to stop just shy of that pencil line. So I'm just going to turn it and add a few more on the other side here. Again, I'm letting them fan out. Just going to put another one right here. One, two, and three. Maybe a little one here. And 
And I'm just going to add one more to the other side. Maybe fill it in just a tiny bit more. So that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll add a small one right here. So again, I'm trying to not go past that pencil line. Not that I there's any rule about it. It's just my goal right now. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add another cluster just like that one over here on this lower side. And again, it starts with a little black teardrop. And then I add three of these little petal shapes on top of each other. And I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm going to make an entire cluster of these right here. And you'll notice that I'm also going to create them here fanning out. So again, they're going to come out radially from a central point. And this really is a conscious decision. I do this on purpose because I want all my shapes to look like they're alive, like they're growing. And this really helps create that. I'm trying to think of, of plants and life and fungi, how they, they just kind of grow outwards like slime mold or any other little life forms like that they just kind of fan out and so that's what I'm creating here lots of tiny little life forms and they're just growing outward so right now it is looking like I'm already got some nice layering so I'm looking forward to adding some of that pencil in later, some of that graphite. And that's really going to help bring in some shadows and, and bring that to life. That shading is going to look that much more impressive. And the layering is going to look that much more obvious. So I'm just looking forward to that part. It's going to be towards the end, of course, after we get all of our line work in. And so now that I have this little cluster in, I'm going to start adding these little tendrils. Just a few of them. Nice and thin and long. And those, I'm definitely going to let those come out past that pencil line. I'll add a few more over here. And what this is helping to do is it's making it that much more dynamic. Whenever you allow the shapes to spill out of the frame, it again makes them look like they're not so flat, like they're actually coming up and out, like they're jumping out of the piece. So again, this was the reason why I added in those frames, not just the first frame that actually frames it, but a secondary one to help create that look. So in those spots where I know I'm not going to go go outside of the line, I'm just starting to put in some ink along that pencil line that creates that inner border. However, when I'm getting to this corner, I think I'm going to add a few elements. So again, I'm going to draw some of those little teardrop leaves and I'm just going to create a cluster of them hanging out off of that large vine. So you'll notice here, I'm just adding them in really gently. I'm also varying their sizes as well. Again, this is going to make it look much more interesting. Some of them are little, some of them are long. Just kind of alternating their lengths. Maybe even stacking them just a little like I did right there. So that looks pretty good. I just closed off the frame there and added a few more leaves just to fill that space in a little bit and I'm pretty happy with that that looks pretty good right there I'm just gonna come in and erase a little bit of the pencil marks I have a terrible habit of leaving pencil lines in even after I'm done but again I'm just having fun here I'm just trying to remember to remove some of them before I, I get too far in the process. So now that I've done that right there, I'm just going to clean up a few lines and I'm thinking about what I want to do on the other side. 
Am I going to add in more elements, like any new designs or new patterns? Or am I just going to stick to what I already have? And because I already feel like there's a lot going on, I'm coming to the point where I'm just going to stick to the same designs I already have. I have plenty of them. And mostly because I'm just working around the edges, I just want to add more cohesiveness to this drawing. So I won't be introducing any new major elements. I'm just going to use the same ones that I already have. So as you can see here, this vine here has those little leaves and I just added a cluster of them to the vine. And this is just because there was a big empty space there and I just wanted to add something that was familiar. Then I'm just gonna add a few circles to the edge here. And you can add these anywhere you like, pretty much in any drawing that I do. I happily add circles in spaces that seem like they're a little too boring. So I'm doing that here. It just adds a little more interest. And it makes those edges look, again, it makes them look less boring. So they're just like little bubbles. So now I'm going to come into the top here. And again, I'm going to repeat that same pattern that I used on the other side of the drawing. So there are these little petals that to me look like candle flames. And I'm just going to start with one of them. And then I'm going to add more and let them all grow from one point. They're just going to fan out from there. So there we have a couple of them in. Going to add one on this side. And so I'm just going to keep adding some more of these little petals, just letting them grow outward. I think I'm going to add one right here. And as you can see for this one, I let it come out past that edge there. And it still looks fine. Just because the elements are so much closer to that frame. So I'm going to let some of them come out just a little. Of course, there are no rules here. We can draw however we like, wherever we like. Just experiment. So just because I did something on the other side doesn't mean I have to do the exact same thing over here. I'm just trying it out with slightly different elements. So I'm just going to keep layering those petals right here. As you can see, sometimes the petals only have two or even just one of those lines. They don't always have to have the same amount. And as I work my way around, you'll notice that space is filling in really nicely starting to look pretty cohesive now that those designs are kind of filling in the spaces. So I'm going to come in and add a couple of those little tendrils. Here's another one right here. And I'm going to go and add some on the top corner as well. But first I'm going to fill in some of these lines since I'm already here. So I think this is a good spot for those tendrils right here. So here's one and maybe another one pointing in the other direction slightly right here. Just to kind of fill in that corner really nicely. So I'm just adding a little bit of ink to that line that creates the frame. And now I'm just going to continue adding in a few more of those little petals. Since I do think that I want to fill in some more of that space with the petals, I think it'll look really nice. So I'm going to add another one right here. And another tendril. And I think I'm still going to add a few more petals. Let's see how that looks. 
and you're welcome to add as many or as few as you like, or even try out different leaves, different little shapes, just to see what happens. I'm going to put a little one right here. And I think I'm still going to add a couple more over here on this side. I'm going to let it keep going. So here's one here. And one right here. So I think that looks pretty good right there. I'm pretty pleased with that. So it's got a nice cluster. They're just fanning out right there, really filling in that space very nicely. So I'm just going to add one more of these little tendrils, but it's not going to stick out. That's fine. It's still inside of the frame. Again, these are just little ways to help fill the space. So now what I have is a lot of space around this vine over here. So I'm going to add a whole bunch of these long teardrop leaves that I've been adding to the other vines. Just going to add a handful more right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to vary the lengths of them. Some of them are long, some of them are short. Sometimes they're touching directly, sometimes they are not. So again, it's by adding all of this nice variation that it's going to make it look much more alive, much more organic, much more vibrant. And of course, it's filling in the space really nicely. Just focusing on making those lines. So I think I'm going to work my way around just a little more. I think it'll look nice. It looks too plain right there. So I'm going to add some more. Just really let them fan out right there. So that looks pretty good so far. Add one right here. So now I'm just going to come over here to the other side and because I have some empty space, I'm just going to fill it in with a couple of circles. And of course this makes it look that much more cohesive because I did add circles to the other side as well. So just adding a few here really, really completes the look. I'm going to add a few more here as well. And as usual, I'm going to try to vary their sizes. Some of them are going to be tiny, some of them are not. So that looks pretty nice. Just a nice little cluster of circles right here. They look like little bubbles. They're like tiny little orbs. And I have this strange little spot right here, so I'm just going to add a couple of these long leaves here. Fill in that space in black and then just add another one. I felt like that space just looked a little awkward so I needed to put something inside of there. So there we go, just a couple of leaves. And I'm just going to fill in that line for that border. But I have some space right here, so I think I'm going to just add a few more circles in there. Since I don't really have any new elements that I want to put in there. I'm just going to clean up the border real quick, since I have a couple of spaces that I never did. And I'm just going to go, go ahead and add those circles in there now. It's okay to have some space that isn't going to have any designs in it. That space will be perfect for just filling it in black. So you can see here I just found another little spot near that vine that looked a little empty and so I'm just adding a few circles. It's just a nice simple element just to fill some space. So over here I'm going to add a few more as well. And just going to look at the overall composition, just looking at where everything's at. And so I am pretty happy with it. I've filled it out enough. And so I'm just going to come in and with my pen, or if you have a marker or anything else you want to use, this is a great time to fill in that background. And I'm just going to go through piece by piece and just fill it in. 
Now my tendency is to just use the black ink. So that's what I'm going to use right now. I'm just going to use the same black ink to fill in the background. You're welcome to do that. Sometimes when I don't want to use the black ink, I also come in with a, instead of the black, I'll come in with just a marker. So if I have like a deep colored blue or a deep purple or something like that, this is a great chance to use that. That usually looks really good too. So I'm just going to come in with the ink. Just fill in each one of those little spaces. Again, this is a great time to just reflect on things. Now, of course, this is this is different than ruminating because I know that some of us, I know I do, we have the tendency to maybe think about things too much. And so I do want to stress that meditative thinking is different than that. You don't want to sit there and just think about the same problem over and over and over. What you want to do is give yourself a moment to untangle those thoughts. To unravel whatever it is that you just have not figured out. And so you want to be patient with yourself. And in truth, sometimes what that requires is to stop thinking about the problem. Just give yourself a moment to breathe. And I know that a lot of people say it. Everybody says, oh, just take a moment to breathe. But I really do mean it. Give your brain a break. That's what all of this is. We're doing all these little tedious lines. We're scribbling in, filling in these tiny little spaces with ink. And why are we doing it? Why would we spend our time doing something like this? Or in truth, why is it even so satisfying? And it may simply be that your mind needs a break from the things that it usually does. And that you need to refocus your attention on something that requires less, less intense thoughts. So that's what we're doing here. We're scribbling in all these little spaces with black ink, really slowly, just taking our time. And so whenever you hear me talking about the meditative aspects of simple doodling or just drawing, or really any kind of artwork that we each engage in, it's because of that. We're doing lots of tiny, tedious little activities, and that helps clear our thoughts away. And as you can see, as long as we really stick to it, we can make progress. I've already filled a good amount in here and I'm just going to keep going. Just one little space at a time. I can tell you that in the past, whenever I thought of doing this, I always second guessed myself. I thought, oh, no, it's not worth it. I would think that there was really no good reason to sit there and and scribble in these little areas for however long it took. But I realize now how important it is for my mental well-being. It's such a simple thing to do. All it requires is a pen and it really helps get me in a better mood that day. So here I'm just finding all these little spaces that were left in between all the little leaves and I'm just filling them in. And I'm also thinking right now about coming in afterwards. So once I finish filling in this space with black or all the little background spaces, at least once I'm filling, I'm done filling them in, I am going to come in with the pencils. So as I do this, I'm kind of looking around my drawing, just paying attention to all those little spaces where I know I'm going to add in some graphite. Now I haven't done this in a while because of the particular ink that I'm using, because you can see that I'm just using a regular kind of ballpoint pen. And so it is just regular ink. It isn't anything special. But if I had used a nicer ink, like a waterproof ink, what I would, what I would try sometimes in order to do the shading is to do an ink wash. And I've done it a few times. I'm not incredibly confident with it, but I do experiment with it from time to time. So what I do is I create this very watered down ink. I know I've seen a lot of other artists do it. It's kind of a traditional method or style 
for ink drawings is you make very watered down ink so that it's a it's kind of this light gray color and then you can use a brush or a, a one of those watercolor pens to kind of use it in certain spots just to create some shading and it does create a really wonderful effect I love the way it looks it's just for whatever reason I'm not as comfortable using wet media that way so I really have to be in the right mindset in order to do that so as I'm filling in these spaces right now, I'm just thinking about how I can use a pencil instead to create a very similar effect. So essentially, I'm just thinking about how I want to add in shading so that it looks nice and smooth. And I'm also thinking about how I want to add in the shading so that it's as effective as possible, while also not going overboard. Because I do already have a lot of ink the image already has a lot of black in it. So when I come in with a graphite in a little bit, I'm really just trying to enhance what I already have. Because the truth is that I could actually add all my shading in with the ink itself. I could come in and do some stippling. Or like I said, I could do an ink wash if I'd use different ink, of course. I could come through and do some hatching or any other kind of thing like that. I could always switch to a, a pen with a, a much thinner point and add little details that way with a smaller pen. But of course, my reason for using the pencil is that it just helps me achieve the look that I want much faster. And right now I'm just really achieving some of those, those major shapes and major forms using the pen. So as you can see, it's moving along pretty nicely right here. I'm just filling in all those spaces with black. So I'm slowly coming around. And it just looks so nice. Because it was so tedious, there's just something that happens in the brain. All those nice chemicals get released. When we take our time and just fill in those spaces nice and slowly. If any of you are so inclined, this is al also a nice area that you could fill in with stippling. And honestly, it would just look so good. If any of you do that, let me know. As usual, I have my Instagram profile linked in the description. So if you happen to be over on Instagram, you could always send me photos. You could always tag me in your posts so that I can see your work. That's always really nice. I love seeing your confidence. I especially love it even when some of you admit that you don't feel like your drawing was too good, but you're still posting it, you're still being brave and sharing it, and that's amazing. Just the fact that you created something on paper alone is a huge accomplishment, so it's always something to be proud of, even if you may not feel comfortable with the end result, or you may think that it wasn't good enough. Just always know that even if you do this for years, you might still feel like it's not good enough. We all feel that way. But for now, really what matters is that we're just enjoying the process. That we're just taking our minds off of all those silly thoughts that plague us during the day. So I'm just filling in this last little space. I'm almost to the end here. just methodically working my way around. I'm also trying to be really careful with the way that I hold my pen. As if I'm especially stressed out, I will really hold that pen so tightly. So I'm trying to remind myself to just loosen up, to not hold it too tightly, because that's really going to end up hurting my hands. So if you do the same thing that I do, try to loosen up your grip. You've been using that pen for quite a while, creating this drawing, so you want to 
really bring down the tension there. Try not to grip it too tightly. I know that at least for me, that really does cause a lot of pain later, so it's really not worth it. It's better to just hold the pen nice and gently. And just fill in the little spaces. So it looks like I'm finally at that last one. Everything's looking pretty good. You see that coloring in that background in a nice dark color, so that black ink really helped bring out all the other shapes. They are so much clearer. It brings them forward so much more. And so before I come in with that pencil, I'm just going to come through with that eraser and erase some of those lines that still remain throughout. It's just a couple of them here and there. Just take a moment to get it all nice and tidy so that we can move on to the next stage with the pencil. And so of course it's perfectly fine to use whichever pencil you like. If you have nice sketching pencils or if you just have a normal pencil, either one will work just fine. And so the very first place that I'm going to come into with this pencil here, this is a 6B. I'm going to come in the center of the flower and just add a tiny bit of graphite right there. Just around the center. I'm just softly adding it in. It doesn't have to be too heavy. So once I fill in that space, I'm going to go grab my blending stump. And just smooth that out just a tiny bit. Just trying to make that shadow look nice and smooth if I can. And like I said earlier, you can always use your finger. You can always use a tissue paper. Anything will work just fine. You don't have to buy any blending stumps. Although that one that I was using there, the one that I am using, is is one that I made myself. I do try to make them sometimes because I just use them so much. It's really important for me to have them all over my desk. So you'll see I'm just adding a little bit of charcoal here. Or sorry, it's not charcoal. It's graphite. So I'm just adding a little bit of graphite along that border that separates that flower and those little petal shapes. So I'm just going to keep doing that with the different elements. So see the separation line? So in this case, at the base of each of these little tendrils, I'm adding just a tiny bit of graphite. And then I'm coming in with the tip of that blending stump and just smoothing out the graphite, just a tiny bit. And so here I'm just going to add a tiny bit of graphite to these circles, just the edge. You can see I'm just sticking to the edge where it touches those other elements. I'm basically just creating a small shadow right there. So there it is along the edge. Just going to smooth it out a little. You can see just how much this shading is pushing the flower into the foreground. And when I'm working into these small leaves, like all these little leaves that are on the vines, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of graphite to the base of the leaf and just smooth it out. So you'll notice I just worked into the base of the vines as well, just did the same thing. And here I'm working into the little leaves. Again, I'm just being really gentle. Just very softly adding in the graphite. Now, depending on the kind of pencil you have, you might need to apply a little more force. Let's say if you're using a, a harder pencil. So if your pencil says, says that it's hard, it will have the, the letter H written on it. So the pencil that I had shown earlier, it was HB. So it was, it was right in the middle of being either hard or soft. 
That's why those are usually the pencils that you'll find sold for, for school use. They're right in the middle. So in a sense, they're kind of neutral. And those work just fine. But if you have a pencil that's on the hard side, you might need to apply a little more pressure just to get that graphite down. Or you might want to find a pencil that's not so hard, maybe a softer one, like the one that I have here. I just noticed that when I use that one, it makes it easier to blend the graphite. So here I'm just continuing, just adding a tiny bit around that outer border that separates the flower from the next element. I'm just going to smooth it out. So again, I'm just trying to add graphite in all those little spaces just to enhance the shading that's kind of already been created by the line work. So I'm going to add some right here at the base of this little cluster of leaves right here. And I'm going to try to smooth it out. Just right there and right there. So it looks pretty dark right there, but that actually doesn't look too bad. And of course you can decide to increase or decrease just how shaded the areas are. Try using your eraser to adjust the levels. I do find that most people tend to go really, really lightly on the pencil. And so the shading is hardly visible. So if you feel like you're one of those people who just is goes in really gently and you kind of hesitate to really try try using that pencil, I would encourage you right now to try adding just a little more. Go back through and add a little more graphite and see how that works. So right here I'm adding that line to the edge. And I'm going to come through and smooth it out with that blending stump. And I'm pretty much just doing this along all the edges where I know that I need to separate one design from the next. So I'm going to do it here. Smooth it out. And I think I'm going to add some right here to these little bubbles. That's going to let them fall into the background now. See? A moment ago they looked like they were on top and now they look like they've fallen into the background. So that's pretty nice. And I'm going to add a little bit to these little leaves here. Just going to come through really quickly and smooth it out. And so taking a look at the entire composition, it looks all right. I know there's a few spots that I did not add graphite to, but that's because they already look fine. But looking at the flower, I do think I want to come into the outer edge of it and just add a tiny bit more. So I want to see how that looks. Just going to rub in just a tiny amount of graphite to the outer edges of the petals. So we have just a couple more right here. And then I'm going to try blending it just a bit just to see if we can complete that look. I'm really just trying to help that flower look like the petals are curved a little more. Again, they're just little details that I try here and there just to see if it really does improve the look. And sometimes I'd like the way that it looks once the, the shading is done this way. Sometimes I don't. I think this one looks okay. Maybe the shading is a little messy, but that's fine. So I'm pretty happy with the result. Now that the shading is in, I'm going to come and clean it up just a little with an eraser. At this point, as an extra, extra tool you could use, if you already have a white charcoal pencil, you can always come in and add highlights in any spots where you think that it would benefit from that. But because I am working on white paper, I think I'm okay now and I'm not going to be adding in any highlights using any kind of charcoal or white paint or anything like that. 
So I think as far as I'm concerned, this is pretty much complete. Just going to finish it up right here. And as an added little piece, I think I'm just going to go and grab a this alcohol marker here. And I'm just going to add this gray border really quickly. I think it might just help frame in the entire piece that much better. I'm just going to color it in in gray. And something that you'll notice in a second is that this alcohol marker ended up doing something really interesting that I didn't expect is once all that alcohol ink soaked right in the the surface or the texture of the paper really started to shine it really looks like it's almost like granite like it's it's got all these little specks throughout and i just thought that was so interesting i love the way that that turned out i i'm guessing it has something to do with the way the paper is made because this paper that i'm using is uh i think it's a sulfite paper and so it just has this really cool speckled effect and I loved it so much. So that concludes our class for today. I really, really enjoyed creating this drawing with you. I hope that you had fun creating it as well. Keep in mind that I am going to be doing a class like this every other Tuesday of the month. So stay tuned. Keep an eye on the community posts. Again, I hope you had fun with me. I'm so glad that you joined me for this. I hope you have an amazing day, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.